Electricity is a vital source of energy used daily by millions of Australian households, businesses and farms. While the Australian electricity network is one of the safest and most reliable in the world, it is not, however, without its dangers. Every year in Australia, rural workers die or are seriously injured in accidents involving live power lines above and below the ground. But the fact is, these incidents should never happen. Because a lot of the time they happen to workers who know about the dangers of working around electricity. Workers who understand the risks but still find themselves in hazardous situations. Electricity is a necessary part of modern day rural life. We just have to be conscious of our safety when working around it. Don't let electricity be a risk to your life or your workmates. Always follow safe work practices. Assess the risks and plan the job at hand. Above all, remember that you're being safe because your family needs you. just watched a fatal rural worksite incident. The kind of tragedy that should never have happened, but did and does too often. So what went wrong here? The power lines on this property, like others, carry electricity, which if contacted, can kill you. To avoid incidents happening, look around and identify where power lines are located and mark them at ground level before you start working outdoors. Talk to the property owner or foreman and take note of any areas on the site which could be hazardous. Check with the property owner or foreman before moving machinery or equipment from place to place. And ensure all machinery is fully lowered before moving it. And if need be, arrange to have the power switched off by the local electricity authority. Sure, you might be so skilled at your job that you hardly have to think about what you're doing anymore. But this is how incidents occur. By making contact with these overhead lines, the tipper truck completed an electrical circuit with the electricity passing through the raised trailer to earth and also through the worker. The truck's operator wasn't electrocuted because in this case he was in the cabin and the current didn't pass through his body to reach the ground. For the moment he was safe and knew the first thing he should do was to try and break the trailer's contact with the power lines. But the truck's controls were disabled by the power surge. Even so, his best course of action was to stay put in the cabin and wait for the power to be shut off by the local electricity authority. Only if and when there is a visible sign of fire should you get out of the cabin. In this case, he jumped clear, making sure he didn't touch any part of the truck and the ground at the same time, which would have allowed the current to run through him. But even then, he wasn't out of danger. An electrical current flowing through the truck has created an invisible radiating electrical field in the earth outwards from the truck. If he walked or ran, one leg would have been at a different voltage from the other and the current would have flowed through his body, causing him to receive an electric shock. The answer was to keep his feet together in constant contact with the ground and shuffle or hop at least eight metres away from the truck. All right, he was out of danger, but what about his mate? Whatever happens, don't try to go to the assistance of anyone who has received an electric shock or let anybody else. All too often, secondary deaths can occur because others get electrocuted trying to help earlier victims. It is a tough ask, but even if it looks like the power lines are dead, keep well clear of anything in contact with the power line by at least eight metres until the experts arrive. They're the only ones who can tell you for sure if it's safe. Another hazard to be aware of is the potential for tyres to explode up to 24 hours after a vehicle contacts a power line. Create a 300 metre exclusion zone around the vehicle for a minimum of 24 hours. Following this, ensure the vehicle is thoroughly inspected for tyre and mechanical damage. OK, this was obviously a dramatisation but it was based on real occurrences. Unnecessary, 
and for the most part avoidable incidents that happen on rural properties each year to workers just like you. We were out harvesting and uh, we had to get up pretty close under the power lines near the fields. Well, we've done it plenty of times before, we've never come close to a power line. Because, you know, Jim always made sure of that, because he was always twitchy about power lines. It was a stinking hot day, and the lines got hot and they sagged about a metre closer to the top of the harvester from what we found out later. And that was enough to cause the problem. I mean, without the rest of it. A storm came in, right, and the winds really blew up. It was getting close to dusk, so the lines were getting harder to see. And Jim just thought he'd finish off the field and call it quits. But the thing is, the winds really blew up. The lines started to sway in the wind, and uh, that's all it took. The lines didn't even touch the harvester. The electricity arced across. It went straight down the harvester as Jim was getting off, and that was it. He, he copped the line to 33 kV. You see, we all thought we knew the ropes when it come down to safety. We should have looked, we should have assessed the risk, we should have, could have. So what do we miss? Why did it happen and why does it keep on happening? Every year rural workers die or suffer serious injuries from accidents involving live power lines. Workers like you who understand the dangers of electricity. Workers who knew the power lines were there, but failed to assess the risks. So, what should have been remembered while harvesting that day? That power lines can sag on hot days, changing clearance levels. That strong winds can cause power lines to sway. That dim light can make power lines hard to see. That you don't have to be in direct contact with a power line to be injured. Electricity can arc across open space. And of course, the same principles apply not only when operating tipper trucks and harvesters, but also when moving many other forms of agricultural machinery and equipment regularly used on rural sites, including cotton module makers, grain augers, irrigation pipes, and elevated work platforms. Whenever a work site is situated near overhead power lines, or when equipment is being moved around close to them, accidental contact can occur. When using aircraft for aerial spraying, mustering and other purposes, ensure the pilot is aware of power line locations. GIS data is also available from your local electricity authority, indicating the approximate location of power lines. But it's not just overhead power lines that are a hazard. At least you can see them. Hidden hazards lurk beneath the ground too. Rural deaths and injuries are also caused by making contact with underground cables, including earths. And as more and more power installations are run underground, the chance of hitting one is becoming more likely. So, what should you do? Firstly, always assume that underground cables are there until you know otherwise. Before you start work, dial 1100 or visit the Dial Before You Dig website 1100.com.au and consult the local authority to find out the location of underground cables. Remember, it's the law, so it's the essential first step for every job. Validate the plans before you dig by using cable location technologies such as GPS or ground penetrating radar and mark up the differences. Pothole at regular intervals to confirm exact cable locations and importantly communicate the exact locations of cables to your workmates. When using plans from Dial Before You Dig, double check when they were last updated as cable depths can vary after road upgrades or new developments. You should never drive a probe into the ground looking for cables. It may sound obvious, but people actually do it and get hurt. Sometimes you will find sand, tape or marked bricks or panels to indicate the presence of underground cables. Other times you'll find a conduit or pipe with the cables enclosed inside. Be aware that direct buried cables could also be present and that new electrical cables are sometimes laid using old conduits. If you think you are close to an underground power cable 
Excavate by hand carefully. If you are excavating where cables might be, use an observer, but keep them well away from the hole. And of course, if any underground cables are accidentally damaged, don't attempt to approach, touch or repair them. Barry, mate, just stay in the cab there, mate. You've a cable there. Keep the machine operator in the cabin and clear the area by at least eight metres. Notify the local electricity authority immediately and wait until they give the all clear before proceeding. It is also important to remember that you don't have to be operating high machinery or equipment to receive an electric shock. Frayed or worn cords on power tools can also be deadly. So always check your equipment and tools are in good working order. Electrical wiring in sheds and other farm buildings should be regularly checked by an electrician, especially after a severe storm or bushfire. And any electrical equipment that operates near water, an excellent conductor of electricity, should also be a maintenance priority. Electricity and power lines are a necessary part of rural life, but dangers can be averted. Whilst every situation is different, being aware of the hazards posed by power lines and taking the necessary safety precautions can save lives, even your own. For further information on electrical safety, and how to keep your property or workplace safe, contact your local electricity authority.